of the New Testament, the epistle to the Hebrews. This morning, as, way of, as by way of introduction, I, I want to deal with the background information for the text. We'll be dealing with many of the unanswerable questions that we are presented with regarding Hebrews as well as the focus of the writer's intent. In the end, I hope that we will provide ourselves the necessary contextual information that we need to understand this tremendous work of Scripture. As introduction in reading this morning, I want us to read the first four verses standing as we do that. And I want to let you know that in the original language, this one, this, this section here, verses 1 through 4, actually is one completed sentence in the Greek language. The idea here is one whole thought that the writer is putting down. It says in verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 1, Long ago at many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed the heir of all things, through whom also He created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. And He upholds the universe by the word of His power after making purification for sins. He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name He has inherited is more excellent than theirs. May God add His blessings to the reading and to the hearing of His word as we pray together. Father God, we thank You for Your word. We thank You that it is precious, that it is perfect that it is powerful and it is powerful enough to pierce us to our very heart. I pray this morning as we study your word, as we begin an introductory lesson upon this great epistle to the Hebrews, that, that we, Father, will be anointed by your Spirit, that we be focused upon your word, and that we not let our attention go from the right and to the left, but Father, be focused intently upon what we are studying. I pray for a safeguard over Your Word, Father, that You would keep me from error. Anoint me with the truth. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I have said this on many occasions, and... John reiterated it last week in his sermon that to study the Bible you must always remember three rules. Context, context, context. John said that last week and I've said that many times myself. Context is the key no matter what we are studying, no matter what book of the Bible we are studying, no matter where in the Bible we are, we must understand the context of what is being written. And the reason why we have so many cults today, the reason why there is so much vast disagreement in the church today and in the world today about what the Bible says, and the reason why there are so many liberal scholars who come out and write so many horrible works about the Scripture and, and cite Scripture in their writing is because they have abandoned the historical context of what is being written. Context is necessary. And this is assuredly so when we come to the book of Hebrews. When one begins the study of Hebrews, however, one finds out one important truth. There are a few mysteries about the book of Hebrews that we have to realize are there from the very beginning. A few things that we just do not know about the book. Oftentimes the context relies upon knowing who wrote the book or knowing who it was written to. But in Hebrews, these two pieces of information are conspicuously absent. The writer does not mention his own name. Neither does he mention the name of the recipients of his letter. Thus the reader finds himself having to examine church tradition, history, and internal evidence of the writing to determine what the context of the letter is. This morning I want to address these mysteries. I want to show that we do not, what we do not know about the book is, is far less of importance than what we do know. 
the few things that we are unsure about, the few mysteries of the book, take a very large back seat to what the book says. And at the end of today, I hope that while we will see that this book does have some unanswered questions, the questions it does answer outweighs them in in, in the idea of relevance to our faith. So you have your outline in your worship folder this morning. If you'll turn to that, it's on the back of the worship folder. You'll see the three points of contention that we're going to look at, the three points of the message. And there are places there where you can write if you hear something that you want to remember from the message. And of course, you can always get the sermons online on video if you would like them as well. But the first thing I want us to notice is what I have entitled the first point is the uncertain writer. If you notice when we read this passage, it did not, it did not open like most of the letters of the New Testament. It does not open with the usual salutation. Paul's letters oftentimes will say, Paul, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. Or it will say Peter, or it will say James, and it will tell us who specifically wrote the letter. But in this work, the name of the writer is absent. And this has caused great debate in the history of the church. One thing that we do know, however, is that whoever the author was, he was an intelligent person and a skilled writer. The book of Hebrews is in fact, when it comes to grammar, and it comes to the Greek language in which it was originally penned, it is in fact the preeminent work of the New Testament. As far as literature... From the Koine period, and that's what the Greek language is called. It's the Koine Greek or the Common Greek. As far as literature goes in the Koine period, Hebrews ranks at the top. It is a beautifully written piece of literature. And the question comes to us then, well, who was this writer who was so skilled in the art of writing that they could write such a beautiful, such a well thought out and and, and so well done piece of literature? Who is it that put pen to paper? Or quill to papyri, as it may be. Many have claimed that it was the Apostle Paul who wrote Hebrews. In fact, if you have an early edition of the King James Bible, which most of you probably don't, I know one person in the crowd who may, Mr. Richard back there, our, our scholar, but if you had an, an original, you know, an old copy of the 1611 King James Bible, it actually says the letter of Paul to the Hebrews. The Roman Catholic Church uh, officially claimed Paul was the author in their Council of Trent in 1563. And interestingly enough, one of the first group of books that was ever sent throughout the churches was called the Pauline Corpus. The Pauline Corpus was the writings of Paul gathered together in one and they were sent out to the churches and Hebrews was included among those books. What that means is whoever put the corpus together, whoever put the work together, likely believed that Paul's, uh, Paul was responsible for writing Hebrews. And of course there are some internal things about Hebrews that make people think that Paul is the writer. If you go to the end of Hebrews chapter 13, you'll see that he talks about Timothy. The writer talks about Timothy and everyone knows just how connected Paul and Timothy were. So that makes people say, well, it was likely the Apostle Paul because of this great connection. Paul said Timothy was his son in the faith. Thus, here is this connection. Also, the high caliber of doctrine that we find in the book. The doctrine is, is only, in my estimation, only seconded by the book of Romans and how deep and theological the book is. And of course, we know Paul wrote the epistle to the Romans. But the question remains, is this evidence enough for us to say for certain Paul wrote the book? I submit to you it is not. In fact, I would go as far as to say whoever wrote the book of Hebrews, I don't believe that it was Paul for a second. Ah, I got your attention. 
Because everybody thought I was making an argument for Paul, didn't you? There are a lot of reasons why people think Paul wrote it, but I'm going to tell you why I don't. And again, this is nothing that I need to get letters about because it doesn't say who wrote it. 